Hi YouTube. So for those of you who keep carnivorous plants, or if you're lucky enough to have seen carnivorous plants in the wild, you'll know that the bog environment they live in is dominated by a certain species of moss. And that moss is sphagnum moss. There are a few different species of sphagnum moss. There's a New Zealand variety. Uh, there are species that are hardy that live uh, in North America. Uh, I'm pretty sure there are different kinds of uh, sphagnum moss all over the place. So a little background on sphagnum. It's a very prehistoric um, fungus moss, a fungus-like moss. So it is in the moss family, in the fungi family. Moss make up part of fungi and the, they reproduce sporadically. What a lot of people don't know is that sphagnum moss is actually peat moss. So when sphagnum moss breaks down, it turns into peat moss, which is considered the ideal substrate for carnivorous plants. So the peat moss you see mixed with coarse sand here is actually the sphagnum moss broken down. So today what we're going to talk about is the cultivation of sphagnum moss because ideally when you're keeping a large collection of carnivorous plants it is very rewarding not only visually pleasing but to the well-being of your plant to be keeping sphagnum moss but one of the big problems with sphagnum moss is the fact that it's really really hard usually to acquire live sphagnum moss what most people usually can get a hold of is something like this, this kind of moss, sphagnum moss, long fiber, and it's usually really expensive too. So you, it looks like this right here. This is what the stuff looks like when it's not when it's not alive. So because it produces reproduces sporadically as well, like you can take cuttings, but because it reproduces sporadically. This is, there is, it is possible to actually revive this moss. So you'll see the small pieces here. And what I'm going to do today is show you what I have read. I actually haven't successfully done this, and I'm going to show you guys, but I will show you anyway what I have read you can do to revive the moss. So, okay, firstly, you'll see that you have a long strand of sphagnum like such. At the tip of the, or the end, you'll have the main, uh, the bud, I will call it, which is this right here. Now, the equivalent of that on a live piece of sphagnum would be, for example, would be, for example, uh, that large piece of moss right there. So this is the live, this is dead, dead end right here, and live there. Okay, so what you would do with this is you can finally chop this end with a knife or ideally it would probably be easier with scissors. Chop this up into little pieces and, sp and spread it over moist or soggy, well no, spread it over wet uh, peat moss and ideally keep it very, very moist. Okay, so let's continue with how you propagate sphagnum moss. Alright, so sphagnum moss can grow on a variety of different substrates. Well, sphagnum moss, like carnivorous plants, needs a very acidic and nutrient poor environment to live in. They inhabit bogs that have no access to running water. It's basically stagnant water that sits there and thus no nutrients are brought in through a current or anything. The water just sits there and doesn't move from where it is and that's what they like. There's no nutrients and there's usually uh, because of how wet it is, trees can't grow in that open environment or not open environment, but trees can't grow in that environment because they just die because it's so wet all the time and thus the moss comes in and creates a soggy like mats of m moss everywhere and when the sphagnum moss breaks down, so let's imagine here we have this layer of sphagnum moss. You can see I have an nepenthes growing on top. So we have a layer of sphagnum here. The moss probably grows down to about here once it's established, where it breaks down and then becomes 
peat. So as it breaks down, it becomes peat moss, which is broken down sphagnum, and that is the foundation of a bog. And continuously new generations of live sphagnum will be here. So it breaks down, pushing layer and layer down. So that's the fundamentals of peat moss. So most people when cultivating sphagnum moss will either grow it on a layer of dried sphagnum moss or they'll grow it on peat moss itself. I've successfully done both. Um, here as you can see I'm growing sphagnum moss on peat moss. So the sphagnum's there and it's on peat moss. Over here with my nepenthes I have a nice live clump of sphagnum growing on dry sphagnum there. So first I'll tell you how you can revive the sphagnum. Um, there are different ways of doing this. Some people recommend the Ziploc version. The Ziploc version consists of taking dry sphagnum moss, pouring in some hot water which supposedly activates the spores and keeping it in a very very sunny location but this can take months to uh, see the beginning of growth and if this would work that'd be really cool because this is some New Zealand sphagnum moss so that's a cool um, variety or cult I, I won't say cultivar it's a cool species it, like sphagnum moss generally looks the same but they do have different color variations and they do look a bit different but yeah, so sphagnum moss is really neat. Uh, the other method is, as I mentioned before, cutting or chopping up the, bud, the buds into little pieces and sprinkling on an, their preferred medium. So either, like I said, the, you can chop it up onto itself, so you get those little spores everywhere. You can chop it up onto itself, keep it nice and wet, and in bright light, they need very bright light, but not to be hot. So it's important to keep them bright but not hot. So keep the moss relatively cool. Not cold, but you know, at a at an average temperature. Right now, this greenhouse is uh it's about 75 degrees Fahrenheit. My thermometer isn't exactly accurate right now. It's like 75 degrees Fahrenheit. It's winter, so I don't want it too hot for these guys. So yeah, 75 degrees Fahrenheit is pretty standard for them and just keep it very bright. They love their bright light and they need to be in water. If you notice that the moss has brown ends like you can see here, uh, browning ends, it means that the plant isn't wet enough and it's being burnt. So you need to keep, you almost always keep sphagnum moss in a tray of water as you can see here. So sphagnum moss is always sitting in a tray of water, in a bit of water. So as long as it's in some water, it should stay nice and moist. Or you have to really, really keep an eye on it and spray it off. And so here's some healthy moss growing with an Nepenthes Miranda. It's settled in good. If you have live moss, what you can do is actually take some, cut, take some cuttings and you can make yourself a little bed in the substrate in the corner and then stick the moss into that little corner and keep it moist and wet at all times. The moist little in the most little bio environment will cause the sphagnum to adapt rather than uh, just start growing. It'll accumulate to that environment and once it's used to it it'll start growing very well. So what I can show you here is what that sort of looks like. So when sphagnum moss starts growing, it just goes wild. It grows really, really fast. So what I've done here is, is I've had I have a few original buckets or containers, and I just cut the moss off, the, the ends off, as you can see, and there's new growth coming. So I haven't done.